Aloha everybody, it's a beautiful day in Hawaii NA. I'm Mike and today we have an 05 Tundra. Now this is my friend's truck and he just purchased this truck and he said that there was major engine work done on this thing. I asked him what kind of work, he said oh, maybe the cylinder heads, maybe the head gaskets, maybe it was rebuilt, I don't know. So I'm like, you don't know what was done on this truck and you just bought it and he says yeah well the guy said he was going to fix any problems but now I can't get a hold of him. So, and I'm like, hey, why didn't you call me before you bought this vehicle so I could have given you the thumbs up or the thumbs down? And he says, oh, it looks good, and the guy said he did all this work, and I just figured I'd buy it. Okay, well, here we go. Um, we're going to dive into this. Right off the bat, it has multiple codes, P0300, multiple misfires detected, P0302, cylinder number two misfire detected, P0304, cylinder number four, misfire detected. P0308, cylinder eight, misfire detected. And P0051, heated oxygen sensor, control circuit, low bank one, sensor one. So this thing has multiple codes. We might have to dive in even deeper than usual. So instead of getting your snorkel and fins, get your full scuba gear because we're going to go in and try to clean up what someone else did, and that's always more difficult. In fact, I told him, hey, I hate doing this kind of stuff. What are you doing to me? God have mercy on me. Anyway, grab your gear. We're going to dive in. So upon doing this uh, initial visual inspection, I see that the engine is clean. It looks like someone has been in recently. And uh, one of the things that I see right off the bat is this clamp right here, and the fuel pressure regulator is loose. So let's go ahead and install that. It's just slid down the hose like they didn't put it on. So I've decided to change this hose. It just doesn't feel right. It does not feel like a fuel rated hose. It feels really soft. So just I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm just going to go ahead and replace this hose right here. All right, we got a length of uh, rubber fuel holes that's rated for fuel injection systems. So you want to make sure you don't just put a regular old line on there. You want to just make sure it's rated for fuel systems. Otherwise, it'll turn soft and start leaking and give you all kinds of problems. So to avoid the problems, just put the right line on there. Okay, that looks a lot better. It feels a lot better. I'm a lot more happy with that hose on there now. Let's start it up and make sure we don't have any fuel leaks right there. Okay, that is good. All right, the complaint was that this thing was running really rough and missing. Scan tool data shows that cylinders number two, four, and eight were missing. And those were the problematic ones. There's also a problem with the heated O2 circuit, bank two sensor one. We'll deal with that one later. Um, but right now, we just want to diagnose cylinder numbers two, four, and eight. Make sure we're getting spark. Make sure the injectors are plugged in and operating properly. And so the first step I'm going to do is just the, the easiest one to do first, which is to just go ahead and while the engine is running, disconnect the connector here on number two number four, and number eight in order. And when I pull this connector off when the engine is running, I expect, if the cylinder is firing correctly at the time, that I would hear an engine RPM drop. If I don't hear a drop, then I know I have an issue here. If I do have a drop, then I know that at least at that moment, that cylinder was firing. So um, it's gonna be a little noisy, but that's what we're gonna do. One at a time, two, four, and eight and listen for the uh, engine RPM change when we disconnect that connector. Yep, cylinder number two is dropping when I unplug it, and the engine RPM is increasing when I plug it back in. Let's try number four. Yep, number four, engine RPM decreased. Not much of a change when I put it back on. Let's try it again. Yeah, there is a slight change on number four as well. Not as much, not as strong. Yeah, there's a slight change on number eight as well, but not as much as I would imagine, or not as much as I would like to hear. Yeah, that's a pronounced difference on number six. So what we're going to do next is make sure that the ignition system on this thing can output the proper voltage. So I have this spark tester here. And this spark tester is calibrated for 50,000 volts. The ignition systems on modern cars should be able to put out 50,000 volts regardless of the maker model. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the coil 
ground it and start the engine and see if we get a spark that's jumping to ground. All right, take the coil out, put this in. Hook up the coil. And hook the spark checker up the ground. All right, I'm gonna start the car now and we wanna see a nice blue spark jumping from the center to the outer shell. All right, I only see an occasional blue spark jumping to ground. There's one, there's another. So this spark is coming inconsistently. What we should be seeing is every time that cylinder goes off, there should be a nice blue spark to ground. And it's only happening occasionally. So let's check something out here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this old spark plug that I have in where the spark tester is right now. So the gap on this spark plug is quite wide. However, it's not gonna require 50,000 volts to jump this gap. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be less than this spark checker because the gap is closer. So let's do that. All right, as you can see, there is a spark jumping this gap persistently and consistently. So I'm going to be doing this test on multiple cylinders to see if I get the same results. Then I'll be looking for powers and grounds on the ignition system. I'm gonna be making sure that each coil is getting the full voltage and that it's able to have a nice clear path to ground. Like I said before, someone was in this vehicle doing things and they just may have left a ground strap disconnected or something like that. All right, I did the coil test on multiple cylinders, both on the left and right hand banks, and the results are the same. The spark can only occasionally jump the gap of the spark plug tester, which is calibrated for 50,000 volts. The spark can persistently and consistently jump this gap on this spark plug here, which is less, has less of a voltage requirement. So one of the next things I'm gonna have to do is go ahead and check for ignition system powers and grounds and see if those things are solid. I may go ahead and do a few easy things first, like pull off injector harnesses and things of that nature, just to make sure there's nothing real obvious. But this is a problem that's gonna to have to get chased down. Since I don't know the history of this engine, and I don't know how mechanically sound it is. I figured I would just go ahead and do a compression check. I have this old cylinder compression tester, and this is not the best way to do these things. A leak down test is way better as far as diagnosing and making sure you know exactly what's wrong, if there's something wrong. However, I don't have a leak down tester, so I do have the old standby here just to see uh, if this engine is at least sound it needs to have at least X amount of compression. I expect to see 150 to 160 pounds of pressure in each cylinder. If I don't see that, and this thing just had recent engine work, I'm gonna be scratching my head thinking, okay, what was done or what was said that was done that wasn't really done. So we're gonna take a look at this. I'm looking for a baseline of 150 to 160 pounds of pressure per cylinder. If you've never done a compression check before, this one's a little easier because it comes in two pieces like that, which just makes it easier to screw in this one side. So you take your spark plug out, you screw this end into the spark plug hole, and once it's snug, back together. So all the coils on the engine are out, all the spark plugs on the, on the engine are out, so it's not gonna start. It's also a really good idea 
to disable the fuel system. And we're going to go ahead and proceed with our compression check. Cylinder number two looks good. We have just about 150 PSI on that cylinder and this engine is warm so that's an acceptable range. So I can't see the gauge obviously when I'm trying to start the car but when you look at the needle the first crank you want to see a good jump coming up here you know 75 to 100 pounds and then as you gather more cranks on this thing at least four to five complete revolutions of the engine then you want to see your ultimate pressure so This one's at 125. That's a little on the low side for this. The engine is warm. Let's do this again. Let's just make sure I didn't have a bad or leaks a bad connection or leak someplace. Let me tighten this up a little more. So the battery on my recorder died and I'm not sure where it actually shut off. So I'm just going to review this really quick. We did a compression check on the right bank of cylinders, cylinders number two, four, six, and eight. Cylinder number two had 150 pounds. Cylinder number four, 125. Cylinder number six, 135. And cylinder number eight, 150. I would expect to see um, 150 to 160 pounds of pressure for each cylinder on this engine. It's approaching 160,000 miles. However, the owner who just purchased this thing said that the person who he bought it from said he did major work. He thought maybe the engine was overhauled or maybe the head gaskets were done. He wasn't sure. However, with these pr compression readings on a warm engine, I'm pretty sure that he did not overhaul the engine. I would expect to see much better compression readings than that. So. While these are lower than normal, I still think that the engine should run pretty smoothly. I'm going to have to look up the specs and see what it actually calls for. But this test was done on a warm engine. So, and the one with 125, I did twice just to make sure that we had good connections and we didn't have any air leaks or anything like that. So uh, I confirmed the 125 reading, which actually is to me quite low. So I'm going to look up the specs and see how this thing stacks up against the specifications. All right, we've got these plugs out looking at these things. They look brand new. They're new NGKs. The gap, just eyeballing it, looks correct here, but the book calls for 44 thousandths of an inch, so we're just going to go ahead and check it. And they're a little bit tight. I can't get my 44 inch, 44 thousandths of an inch in there, so we're just going to go ahead and widen this gap just a tad. That's really close. A little more. Just a little too much. Let me tighten that up a little bit. You want this wire part to slide through the electrodes with just a slight amount of drag. And this one's right there now, so that one's good. Let's avoid problems. Let's avoid diagnostic problems by not having the right spark plugs in at the right gap. All right, so what I've found, the uh, spark plug torque specs for this engine are 13 foot-pounds. So we're going to go ahead and do that.
So my friend who owns this truck had an emergency. He called me up and he said one of his other trucks had broken down with some kind of transmission issue and that he needed this truck immediately. So we stopped, put it all back together, made sure it was roadworthy for him. And just regapping the spark plugs made the engine smoother. But we're not done with this thing. So we're going to just call this part one and come back to it at a later date. Aloha. And a hui hole.